month of August. So as you can see, can you see the heart? Yes, I can. It's lovely, beautiful. So it's in the connection with tonight's topic, love and support. And in the name of love, the businesses are booming. <laughs> uh, lots of, you know, gifts and flowers and you name it. Everywhere you see this beautiful icon of the heart. You know, it's just like taking over. In a sense, it's creating that wave and enthusiasm. And uh, Recently, someone said to me, even in some of the stores, people are starting to shop all these flowers. So in the name of love, so many experiences are being given to each other. And there is also a flip side of that love, which we can talk about later, but definitely love and support as is a team tonight. It is something that we want to explore and we want to experience because all of us, all of us have experienced some aspect of love, or maybe we have been playing that role of giving support to others so it's i'm so happy and delighted to be with all of you and i'm sure uh, at some time in the program some of you will have a moment to share or to ask question or to interact so it will be a very beautiful experience for both of us yes. thank you michelle thank you Okay, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, I had a couple of questions. Um, let's talk about relationships, uh, because I always wonder, do you have to be in a relationship to experience love? And can you define what those relationships are? I mean, it's kind of, you know, we usually think of animate objects or sentient objects. People love their dogs, people love, you know, animals, but most likely they'll like love their the people around them but what is that about the relationship um that takes place with with love and support mm -hmm. so yes this is an interesting topic of um whether we have to be in a relationship to give that love and support but i think the foundation to create a relationship is actually based on love it's that pure feeling inside of a human being that gets materialized and that affection or that love or in whatever way it is expressed is being shown or, or is being um, shared with others, whether it's an animal or it's a human being or in whatever aspect of life, but definitely it comes from within the being. And what I wanted to share this evening with all of you is uh, sometimes we always feel that the heart, the organ of the heart is responsible for, for uh, giving that experience of love. You know, they say, I love you with all my heart. And we always keep pointing to our heart. But then again, it's, uh, it's just an organ. It's an organ that pumps blood into the whole body and keeps it going. And that organ is as precious as a brain or the kidneys or any other organs that we have. Uh, can we check in and see if everyone is having a good reception? Because I'm hearing some sound in the background. Is that? Mr. Kamla, only you and Michelle are unmuted. Everyone else is muted. Okay, sure. There's a sound. I'm not sure where it's coming from. But anyway, um, I'll continue. Thank you, Sister Sandhya. And as I was saying, it's where we feel the understanding is the heart is being used a lot in our conversation or in expression, but I feel it is actually the being that is in the body, which we talk as, as the soul. We consider it to be the soul, the real life force that is allowing this body to be activated. And that life force, as you have heard the expression, the soul, the energy that resides, that is the important being that is in this physical body that is expressing all these emotions. So definitely the heart, the soul, 
because the soul is has captured all the emotions and the feelings and the memories and it's a whole gallery that's in, within that being that is expressed when um, you know when there is an interaction with another human being or um, with nature or with animals so definitely coming back to that question of if we have to be in a relationship to give love and support. And actually, when I heard this question, I was, I thought maybe you meant when two people are together, if they have to be together to give each other that love and support. So the thoughts that were crossing my mind was that today, even though we are together, many of us can be living together with each other, but not necessary there's that experience of closeness and love. So physically, it doesn't mean that you have uh, people around you or objects around you, but within yourself, you're feel, feeling as if you're in a distant experience. So like they say, thousands of miles apart. So actually it comes to that aspect of love where if I, the soul, I'm connected to another being as a soul, then it doesn't matter where that person is. Then I can connect with that being, with that experience of love, pure love. So, you know, they say you can be together, but you are very far from each other. You're distantly far. And there is not that experience of sharing of love and emotion. So, of course, there are many interesting aspects to cover today, but I just want to hear your other questions so I can connect the dots together before I go ahead, Michelle. Michelle, you're oh. muted. Yes, no, I, I just wanted to say I'm having a little glitch with my, I have a little drama with my computer. Can you hear me now? We can hear you very well. Beautiful, okay. And I apologize, I had to get back on. So, um, I wanted to ask about loving ourselves. How do you give what you don't have? Can you love without loving yourself and support without loving and supporting yourself? That's something that I, you know, I, I remember uh, Sister Sandhya one morning did a program on Saturday morning. What do you think of yourself when you ask these questions? And for some reason I was in a good mood and I really scored high on really liking myself. So uh, that day I was filled with a lot of love, but how do you feel, um, you know, in, in terms of how you give love if you don't feel it within yourself, if you don't love yourself? This is a beautiful question because it's really practical. And we are seeing that there are a lot of people who are quite empty inside and even you see caregivers for example and I've seen that recently they are tired you know they have been working for so many hours and when they some of them they meet with a patient they can not give that full you know um, uh, love or care as they would want to because they are extremely tired and we've seen many people who are drained or empty and recently, I think I heard a story of um, a parent coming home and a little kid that's home is expecting that affection and that love from the parent and has that need. But of course, the parent is very tired and is exhausted, had been through the whole day and is kind of drained. And so on one hand, if we are being... Um, sucked into the vibrations of the world and um, almost as if the energy has been depleted. And some of us can testify to that, I guess, as you're listening, that you come home and you're not able to give as much as you would like to because you're mentally, emotionally, and physically drained. So that is a good question. How can you give to someone what you think you don't have? How can you share? And sometimes you hear the expression, well, I don't care for any other person. I just care for myself in a selfish way. Or I only care about the people who are around me. I don't care about my neighbor, my friend, or the, the stranger that is walking across 
in my neighborhood. I don't care for any one of that. So we have reached a point, a very sad point in our life where there is no love to give, no comfort to share. There is no compassion. There are no vibrations of love and you know that attention that people need, even in terms of the environment that we are in. And that's because, and we are seeing it every day more and more, people are getting depleted. And, and that's because they probably are distressed by the situation because they have to face so many challenges in life. So definitely they're empty, totally empty. And I remember listening to a program um, and I believe it was the caregivers in some of the hospitals in UK. And they were sharing the same aspect about as caregivers, they don't have much to offer to the patients. And which is sad and which is not their fault. It's because that it's just part of life that people have become so depleted and perhaps they don't know how to refill themselves with that love, with that abundance of bubbly happiness and joy, which they can give to others. Yet we do have uh, people in the past, and there are some people I would like to mention, like a Mother Teresa, for example, or a Pope John Paul, or Mahatma Gandhi, but there's so many um, maybe forgotten people who have been and gone, and whose life was not just for themselves. And you wonder when you see people like that, and uh, one of the reference here is Daddy Janki, our past administrative head. And because I've seen in some aspect how she operated, I can give that example. She was like overflowing with love. And it's not a love just for one day or one hour or one month. It was a love that constantly was there. And it was not just love because love comes with compassion. Because I can say I love you, but then I do nothing. <laughs> What, is, what is, use is that love? I love you, but I don't show care. I don't show any emotions. <laughs> so it's like a dead love. But with that love of where, as I looked at that individual, Daddy Janki, for example, where she would have touched the lives of thousands and thousands of people with her presence. And she truly cared. When people used to meet with Daddy Janki, some of them would burst into tears because here they have met an individual and they feel that she really, really cares. She understood my heart. She has a lot of love. She has a lot of compassion. And so you wonder where is she getting all that love from? And whether she's at the airport, she will always have with her a little container with sweets. And these are all strangers around her. And she's just keep giving sweets to everyone. <laughs> you know, it was just amazing to watch that ability. If someone was in the hospital, she would go and visit that person. And just her mere presence, that person start feeling as if they are healed. Interesting dynamics is that a human being just like you and me but where is she getting that unlimited love or maybe any of the people of the past, spiritual people or leaders, when they have this ability to give and share and share, where is it coming from? So it's not something that we can just pretend we have. I love you for a day. I love you for a week. I love you for a month. But where is it coming from? What is it that is driving an individual to keep serving and serving and giving and loving unconditionally. And here is where I want to uh, share with you that this is from the experience and the practices of meditation is that when the, the soul is connected with its own self, when I really have understood who I am, and I think a lot of us <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of us don't explore this whole concept of who am I? We wake up in the morning and we keep going and we keep rushing. 
And some of us never really spend time with ourselves to understand who am I and what it is I have within me that I can share with the world. What are the beautiful gifts I have inside of me that I could share with the world? So first is that understanding, reflection, being introverted and spending time looking inside the self and experiencing all the treasures that are there. And of course, in the practice of Raj Yoga meditation, we understand when we are connected to the source of light, the source of unconditional love, selfless love. He is the one who is bestowing that limitless love into the soul. It's coming from somewhere. And when I receive that love, definitely there is transformation. And that love will filter through my vision, through when I look at others, when I interact with them, when I perform actions. So it is a love from the source that will keep me sharing the treasures to the whole world. And of course, if I recognize I don't have it, it is to be true and honest with the self and to explore the heart within. And I know there are people who said, well, I have been through a very bad situation in my life. My parents were like this. My siblings were like this. You know, I grew up in a very not so good environment. I don't have love. I have nothing to share. And in fact, when you see someone who is very aggressive and um, expressing anger and hate towards others. And it's something that I read from Daddy Janki in which she's saying is, you have to have compassion for that person because they don't have love. There's an absence of love. And it is what they have, that is what they're giving. But if they're able to have that self-realization that they truly are this beautiful being, this life force, it's full of joy and love because we say the innate qualities of each one is purity, bliss, love, happiness, and so many other qualities which we came into the world with. We came into the world as beings filled with positive virtues. And of course, after so many years, everything has been lost. We have forgotten the value of love and now we are looking at another individual or maybe an animal or maybe something to give me back the love. Instead as a human being, the highest creation who is or was the embodiment of love, they are the one who's supposed to be giving to the world, not taking, not expecting. So it's a, it's a beautiful question. And I think with this, uh, some reflection can be done individually. Uh, each one can check themselves and see to what extent they can share that love or expand on that love or you know, create that love through the power of meditation. Can you hear yeah, me? Sure. Yeah, now you can hear me. Um, I'm sorry. I, I was going to, I'm going to skip to uh, a question that I was going to save for the end, but I think you've already touched on it. I know through the years we, we get um, a lot of questions in the chat that lead uh, to the idea, of, like, how do you offer love and support to someone that you don't get along with? And that happens. They said, oh, I, I try to talk to this person and I try to be nice. And they're always have a snide remark or they're always, you know, giving me, I call it the hairy eyeballs. They never look at me right. And they just don't get it. And they're nasty to me or at work. You, you know, they're always looking to fight with people. How, you know, when you think about Daddy Janki, she never saw that in people. She only saw the soul. She saw the beauty uh, in that person, but and from a practical uh, experience for those who are not as trained and not as, pra I don't want to say trained, but as practiced, can you offer some practical aspects of how do you start 
at least, looking differently at the person to love that person. You may not, I always say I may not like the person and what they do, rather the behavior of the person, but I can still want to bless that person, love that person, and in my heart support that person. How do you do it? Like I always use the expression, it's hard to, it's easy to hug, hug a cuddly bear, but it's not so easy to hug a porcupine. So how do you hug a porcupine who at work wants to throw quills at you or you perceive they're throwing quills at you? Are there any practical things we can start doing to make it easier so we can eventually get to that point, that piece where everyone we look at, no one can throw quills at us? Yes, that's a lovely question, uh, Michelle. And I'm sure all of us sometime or another in our life, we have met people who can be mean, who can be aggressive, who can be nasty, who can be uh, bossy, could be controlling, and there are a host of other things you can um, experience. And especially in the world out there as everything is becoming more and more tense, then of course, people are becoming aggressive. And if you happen to be here, or there with them, you are the lucky one because they throw everything at you. But what I see works is the understanding of, in the, in the lesson of Raj Yuga, it teaches in the first lesson that within the being, there is this beautiful soul. And each one of us in that body, each one is a soul in that body, a beautiful being the creation of God. And when I can change my vision through understanding, through spiritual wisdom, that here, all of us are living in this world. This is a, the world of humanity. We are sharing the same resources. We are together as a family, whether we want to accept that or not. And all of us are here for a short time. We're not gonna be here forever. And if you think you're gonna be here forever, then good luck, <laughs> right? And our little time that we're here is to interact with each other, to give love and to have the feelings of gratitude and appreciation because we are one family. Even if we are from different backgrounds, different religion, different culture, different creed, belief system, the understanding is that we are all brothers. And that's why perhaps this expression brotherhood is being used. When there is that awareness based on wisdom and understanding, then my vision for each one will change. Just as if I look at my real brother and I know this is my brother, I will look at him with love because it doesn't matter how we behave, he is my brother. So when there is a feeling of you have accepted everyone as they are unconditionally, then it is easy to transcend those feelings of what we call as body consciousness, looking at what you're doing and how you're behaving. Because my experience seeing people who are very mean and nasty is that deep down inside of them, they want love. They want love. And there's a story, and this is a real story. And it happened about, let's say, 2000 years ago. <laughs> and it's a story of a little boy who um, he was, you know, very educated and he was doing well in school. And so his friends, they got jealous. And so they created a story, something of, of uh, blaming him for something he didn't do. And they went to the parents and say, your child is doing this and that and the other. And of course, when that little child came home, the parents said to him, leave. You can't come in this house anymore, leave, just go. And he was very, very angry. He, was, he didn't know where he had to go. He didn't have any friends. So he went into the forest. And of course, in those days, you had what is called uh, thieves and robbers that were living there. And they actually took him under control and they took care of him. They nurtured him. And of course, he became quite famous 
in his time because he was famous for killing people. He was famous for killing people. And because he was very angry, he grew up with that anger and that hate that people, you know, his parents threw him out and he felt this was not right. It was unjust. And in that process, because he started killing people, there was a time when he was in the forest waiting for another person to show up. And there he saw, it was like a saint walking into the forest quite peacefully. And so he started to run after the saint and he said, I'm going to kill him. He will be my next victim. But he found as he was running, he could not catch up with the saint. Then the saint turned and looked at him and said, my child. And those words melted him to the core of his heart. He started to cry like the child. He was wanting that love. He was wanting that affection from someone. And that was the day of transformation where he gave up all the violence and he became a disciple of that saint. And of course, the story goes on. But what I wanted to share is that love can change anyone. And in the case of a daddy Janki, for example, the love that she experienced in her connection with God through meditation, it was quite unlimited that it didn't matter who was in front of her. She shared that love unconditionally. Just like Mother Teresa, she sacrificed herself. She didn't think about her sleep. She didn't think about what she was going to eat. She took care and she nurtured those who were in front of her that needed that care and attention. So definitely to change my, um, my vision, my attitude, and my behavior towards someone is by looking at them as that being that is full of love. And I'm creating that experience that each one has a gift of all the beautiful treasures of love and peace and happiness, but they have forgotten it or they have lost it. And in my silence, when I interact with that individual, I can be able to share those vibrations. I can be able to express those feelings through my, my thoughts, my attitude, my interaction. And of course, I can be able to penetrate into that soul so that some vibration can change that individual. So it's not I'm expecting them to, to be nice to me because expectation leads to disappointment. So now when we have the spiritual wisdom and knowledge, we transcend all of that. We're not gonna look at the individual, how they're behaving, why they're behaving, because all of that is based on what we call as, there's a word that we use, sanskaras, impressions. There are lots of impressions in each one of us. And those impressions, when they surface through the being, then it is expressed in different forms. But a person who is knowledgeful, and I believe that's why they say, if a person is knowledgeful, they are sensible. They know what's right. And they know how to go beyond because they understand the limitation that this person is limited in their giving, in their sharing. But now I've experienced and I've tasted that joy of unlimited sweetness and love. I can share that with that individual. And this can be done in silence. You don't even have to tell the person, I'm sharing love with you. <laughs> and watch the magic that happens. And there are lots of stories where people say, you know, as you were expressing, Michelle, about individual behaving in a certain way. But when they experience that warmth and that love coming from another person, it helps them. So not pointing figures, why are you not changing? You should be like this. They don't have it. So I'm expecting them to give love or to show some kindness and appreciation, but they don't have it. I have to understand they don't have it then. So why don't I share what I have with them? Why don't I show kindness and love 
and gratitude. So in this tangible way, a person is able to see even from your body language, even through your vibration, even through your action, they're able to take a tremendous amount of support through that. So I don't know if I overstep <laughs> answering that question, but I just wanted to share. No, that was beautiful. Um, if I may, I would like to share an experience that I had recently. Uh, I shared it with Louise, my co-host on Thursday nights, and she thought that I should bring it up one evening. Is it okay if I share very quickly? Oh, it's a similar um, story. This is not about someone. This is someone I didn't know. I often, um, I'm on the subways a lot because I, I go to work in the morning and at one morning I'm on the subway and it's rather crowded. And unfortunately there are people that are homeless and they are, you know, they look, I, I don't want to, I don't even know how to describe it. Down on their luck is not the right word. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I'm learning how not to be sad uh, because I feel, you know, I'm so blessed and I see them, but you watch people's reaction. You know, I, I try not to, but you, I'm, I feel for those people, these homeless people. And there's one gentleman who was sitting, he was like sleeping because it was very early in the morning and I was tired too. And he was trying to get in a comfortable place. And you could see when people were going on the train that they're, you look at their reactions and it, it ranges from disgust. Like, why is that man taking up more than two seats? And he's in my space and everyone he is like, you know, normally the train is very crowded and everyone is crowded together. He is all alone. You can see how everyone is, walks away from him, like almost, you know, like he's a uh, kryptonite, so to speak. And I looked at him and I, something made me sit right next to him. And I saw the reactions of the people next to me, you know, near me, like, why, why is she sitting near him? She should be afraid. She should not sit with him. And I turned and I watched him and it, he clearly looked, you know, he was trying, he had his face covered with a hood. He clearly um, was trying to sleep and he couldn't, he was twitching. And, and then I turned behind him was a stick, like a, a, a blind, a person who can see. So he clearly was blind. So I don't even know if he could see. And I tried very hard to look under his hood to see his face. I wanted to see who this man was and, uh, you know, to, to connect with him. And I couldn't, I saw his hand and I'm watching people. And I thought to myself, this man needs comfort. And I didn't know what to do at the time, you know, that people will react and, and you know, you start. But I, after a while, I, it didn't matter. And I remember taking his hand very gently and I put his hand in mine and I remember stroking his hand mm. and he relaxed. You saw his hand. He couldn't see me. I don't know if he was blind or, you know, but his hand was so soft. It was so amazing how sweet his hand felt. It get a little, it's not upset the joy the, that feeling, you know, all I have to do is think of that man's soft hand in mine and my eyes fill. But I was thinking, I was asking Louise, you know, am I sad? I'm not sad. I am overwhelmed with mm -hmm. love. When I think, when I held his hand, that's something that I think I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. That feeling of his hand when I'm sad. Or when I don't know what to do, I'm going to think about holding that man's hand. And he's a stranger. And I, I don't know what other people thought. They probably thought she's crazy. She's touching a dirty homeless man. But that hand holding was such a gift to me. Some feeling like even now as I speak to you, this is not tears of sorrow. It's tears of I don't even know what it is. It was so beautiful. For the rest of the day, my heart was bursting. So that leads to my next question. You talked about cards. You know, we people spend a lot of money to show their love, right? You go Hallmark, you go, you know, there are hearts everywhere. You buy roses, you buy 
um, presents for people. You know, if you don't love me, you you, you better buy me something. <laughs> and I think about it, you know, all the gifts I've gotten through the years, I don't remember oftentimes the gifts that I got last year, but I remember the feeling of someone saying something beautiful to me or writing a beautiful card. I love you. You're so sweet. Or, you know, I send you love. That's what you remember. So my question to you is, we know about what physical love is, you know, buying things and giving things and saying, I love you and that type of thing. But what does spiritual love look like? Did I have a spiritual encounter with that man I was holding hands with in the, um, that stranger? Is that a spiritual love? And can you have physical love without spiritual love? You know, is that a hollow love by having physical love, but without that spirit behind it, what is, is it really love? I know that's a hard question, but that's what I was wondering. Wow, beautiful share. <clears throat> Sorry, beautiful sharing, Michelle. Very touching and quite moved to see how you would reach out to another individual. And it's actually your heart, the soul, connecting to another soul. And it really shows you that um, from your story, how much you care. Uh, it's an expression of love. Like I say, you can say, I love you. But what is the proof of that love? How do you show that love? So definitely it's coming from the soul, from inside of you, deep inside. And there is something that you're connecting to when you see that individual. And I'm sure in whatever way you have expressed, even spending a few minutes with that individual, he'll never forget that. You know why? Because he will feel, here is someone who cares for me. Here is someone who is showing love. Here is someone who appreciates. Maybe nobody even look at him. And that is really, um, I'm so happy you share that experience. It is, uh, even though it was a physical act, but it was coming from deep within the individual being because you're prompted to do that. And in that, it, ex it shows that, you know, um, someone trusts me, someone cares for me. Uh, and recently, uh, uh, in relation to this, there was also someone who called me and uh, she was quite burdened with lots of things in her heart, lots of different things in her heart. So she called me and not necessarily wanting an answer, but she just shared and open up and express and let everything out <laughs> and spend maybe an hour or more just emptying herself, herself. And at the end, she said, thank you for listening. I feel so much more comfortable with myself. Now, I didn't say anything, but I think there are people out there who want support, who want to be heard. They want someone to listen to them. They want that, care. even if you're walking in the street and that eye contact, acknowledgement, even through the eyes, because the eyes are the windows of the soul. Through your eyes, you can express love, even through the smile that you have. You can make another person smile. You can make their day, actually. So these are, you know, simple acts which we can do, but it's not that we pretend to do it. It has to come from the heart. And just that little story tells me a lot about you, Michelle, that in your heart, it's, it's, it's pumped with lots of love and care um, to share with the world. And this is how all of us, I think, this is how we should be sharing that, that emotion of love. And even if in a physical way, like now people are giving gifts and love uh, in a form of love to another person. And sometimes it's done for a selfish reason that you give someone because you're expecting something back from them. And this is also the human dynamics in the world today. Because I always see love as a flip side of a coin. On one side, you see love bringing people together, creating unity, creating warmth, creating togetherness. On the other side, in the name of love, it is so selfish. You know, it's in, in the name of love, there is argument, there is conflict, there is fighting, there is violence and killing 
You, know, you open the, the news or you look at the news and you see all these things every single day. And sometimes you question like, what is real love? What is this thing called love? No, it's very confusing. The world revolves around love, but what is love? And my feeling is that love is when I am aware of who I am and I connect in love with the supreme energy who is unconditional, who does not expect anything from me, but give me all the love and shower me with lots of power. And he empowers me and he cleanses me at the same time. And so that love is like an ocean overflowing. So when I absorb the love from that supreme source of light, that's all I want to give. It doesn't matter. I don't know you. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from. I will share that love. And even if it is expressed in a tangible way, for example, you see someone needs help and you help that person or someone is hungry and you, you feel that you need to help that person. So it's even if it's coming from the soul, it's expressed in a tangible way. In some cases, we say um, the, the love and the wisdom that we have received from God is to share it with the world so that they can understand themselves and they can start liking themselves. Because people today don't like, they don't appreciate themselves. They're looking at others for that love, for that acknowledgement. And they're running, actually running away from themselves. And some have gone into that state of depression. They feel they're, they're not nice. They can't fit in in society. Their upbringing was in a very bad environment. So they keep replaying all these stories over and over and thinking I'm not good enough. I don't have love. I don't have nothing in me. Whereas here, the understanding is the way God looks at me with that vision of so much of love that I fill myself with abundance of love. And the first thing I will do, I'll start caring for my own self, self-love. Like I say, it's not just love, but you start caring for yourself. And then you offer that also to others, which is natural. Yeah? Because you want to share wherever you are, if you have a big heart, that spirit of generosity will always be there to give, to give, to give, like Daddy Janki, I guess. That even she had shared one interesting story that there was a time they didn't have much to eat. And she had this one, you can say like a bread, a slice of bread. We call it chapatis. And with that, she had a little vegetable. And that one piece of bread was supposed to be her meal. <laughs> and it happens at the same time there were a few people who came, they were visiting, maybe five or six people. And what she did, that piece of bread that she had, she shared it with all those six individuals. She didn't think, oh, I'm hungry, let me eat it for myself. She shared it with others. And this is called the generosity of spirit. And that has come because when the heart is open to receiving, open to receiving and it become big, generous unlimited then you don't want to keep everything for yourself you just want to give you just want to go with the flow of love and share love because i think now more than ever the world needs pure selfless true love and that love will heal humanity whether through thoughts through words through vibration to even just to sit and spread those vibrations of love, it would reach far and wide into the world. It would touch the hearts of souls far away. And at least that will bring them hope and faith in themselves. <laughs> I just wanted to share that. That's beautiful. I, I have to say, uh, you were right about having a flow to the conversation. I feel well, you've answered all of my questions uh, and then some. So I ask everyone if you have any uh, questions or comments that you wish to put in the chat. I'm looking now. Please do. Uh, if any of you have had any encounters like that, because um, one of the things that I had, I think you answered it for me anyway, um, 
can you have physical love without spiritual love? And I, I think for me, that answer is no. I think the most uh, poignant examples of love, what I feel is real love. And, and when you know love, it's a feeling that, as you say, intoxicated, your heart feels like it's going to burst. That is always, after I take a breath, I go, oh my, that was supernatural. That was not of this world. This was something beyond the world. And so that tells me that God was nearby, that it, the love was not just a physical love, you know, of this matter, but it was well beyond. And even that moment, you know, with that poor gentleman or that loving, he could have been an angel for all I know. I don't know, maybe he was a test paper for me and he was an angel. But I like to think that uh, he tested and maybe I passed the test. But that moment was a spiritual moment. You know, even when I think about it, it was a spiritual moment of love. So I think without you have answered that question that, you know, physical love is not real love unless there is spirit behind it. And that's something that I've come to learn with studying with the Brahma Kumaris, that it is a full circle. It is everything. And, and only by sharing the love that you have inside and you need to have it, you need to recognize it in yourself in order to give it, um, that when you have it, it, it doesn't mean anything unless you share it. That is what I asked the first question, the relationship. Love is relationships, either with yourself, with God, with, with anything. It is, it starts with, and we are relationship, you know, that's the human way is relationships. Um, I think that's when we're at our best is when we, um, that relationship with God and then how that translates into what we do. So I'm not sure if anyone has any questions. I wanna check the chat. Sometimes people are just churning and don't have much to add um, to that. But uh, this was really an important uh, class, I think, for all of us, a, a class or session. I always call it a class. I, I think it's always learning and, and doing and being. And so I look at these uh, when I describe to people what I'm doing Thursday night, I go, oh, I'm in class. I'm learning. And I am, so <laughs> you'll forgive me, we call it a session, but to me, this is a class and we're all students all the time learning. And this is probably the most important classes that we take. Mm -hmm. And boy, if we can share that love, and I know we are. Um, oh, wow, thank you, thank you, Jane. Uh, we got a little share here. Thank you, Jane, hope Jane is doing well. Thinking about Jane, let's send Jane some love and support, which I always do, love Jane. <laughs> Um, love all of you. Um, so I, and, and I want you a sister because we need a little time for you to pull together a little um, meditation commentary on what we, can you bring us to that point of love and support? Yeah, before so that, if there's anyone want to share anything, ask any question, they are. Um, Let me look. A little bit. Okay, quite a beautiful, oh, and that you got to thank you from Jane for your gifts and treasures on the topic of love, just to comment that really appreciate all of your comments and uh, comments. There's a beautiful slogan which says, wherever you go, whatever you do, I will always be there to support you. <laughs> and that's him. That's the mm -hmm. higher power up there. He's saying, wherever you go, sometimes we don't realize, we think we are alone. We think there is no one with us. No one can help us. And when people start sharing their situation, they forget there is a higher being there who is aware and who mm -hmm. is there to support every moment, every step I take. Mm -hmm. I can receive that support if I open my heart to receiving it. Mm -hmm. One thing that I used, it's funny when you say about, you know, we talk about hugging porcupines of people that we don't get along with, but what I learned here, and it helps me, I thank people that don't necessarily seem to like me. There are people that for whatever reason want to, you know, lash out at me for whatever reason. I don't take it personally like I used to, uh, oh, but um, 
I, I say thank you for being perfect in your imperfection because their imperfection, if you will, at that moment is perfect. And it brings out hopefully in me that love. So um, that's, that's something else that, that for that moment, they're showing me a side of them that is helping me be a better person. So that's also very, um, very, I look at that. It says, sister, you should unmute yourself now. Oh, you should be able to unmute yourself. Okay. I'm told that you can unmute if you want and you can speak. So that would be. Um, so these are for the good. participants, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> yes. If anyone has anything, if not, then we will get right. They're all full of love and they are yes. blossoming and they're like, mm -hmm. they're like heart. <laughs> Yes, yes, they're like the heart. Yes, yes. Full of love, bursting mm -hmm. on the share. And you know that famous song, All I Need Is? That's love. right. All, all you need, need is love. La, 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 la. Yes, love is all you need. And it's true. It's true. A lot of uh, prophetic, uh, so, a lot of prof prophecy to that song. Oh, okay. Oh, here's a question. We got a question. All right. Hmm. Uh, we have a question. Uh, does your love increase the older you get? Ooh, that's an interesting. <laughs> I could answer that in many different ways. That's a wonderful question. Do you think it gets the older you get, the more love you have? And I think it's great. A, yeah, that's a beautiful uh, question. Beautiful question. Yeah. Um, the more experience you get in life, as you you know, as, of course, as you get older, you understand life differently and you begin to appreciate and also yes your giving and sharing would be at a much higher level than when you're going through your stage of development so definitely as you get older you are you know i've seen people like that they just sit quietly and it's as if they're giving unconditional support without saying a word mm -hmm. could be parents it could be someone but definitely you're filled with that wisdom and filled with that um love and gratitude right. so right. they understand what's imp what's really important hopefully with age comes wisdom and what's really important and that's a great question thank you for sharing it's great right. so i think right. all of you have a wonderful um, month and year and life filled with love because they say, there's a saying, a life without love, what kind of life is that? Mm -hmm. If you don't have love in your life, and I'm not even talking just about physical love, first you have to love yourself, then you're able to love others. And then whatever you give out, it comes back to you. You love mm -hmm. others, others are going to love you. You give respect to others, others are going to give you respect. And of course, it has to do with your connection with the source of love. If that is you know, very, very intimate and sweet relationship with God, then definitely the heart would remain so full that you would never ask for anything else. That's all you need, his love. And of course you share that with the world. So a happy um, experience of love and you keep um, experimenting with this beautiful quality of love. And that perhaps maybe if you want me to take you into a few minutes of meditation. Please. Do that. Yes, please. That'd be um, great. Thank you. So I would request all of you to sit quietly and go into the deep recesses of your mind. Take a moment. to go into the cave of introversion. Deep inside. Visualize your sitting with yourself. It's a good chance to know the self. to come face 
to face with your heart, with your feelings, emotions, and as a detached observer, watch yourself, observe what's in the heart, and if there is still some form of pain, sorrow, unhappiness, or memories of the past, memories of the long distant past that I'm carrying, that is hurting my heart, or maybe I had a bad relationship that's hurting my heart. Now is the time to observe that. And it is a time to open up your heart and allow the beautiful light of the supreme energy to filter into you. So now visualize that beautiful golden ray light coming into me, touching the core of my heart. And as the rays of light touches my heart, it is cleaning. It is purifying everything of the past, all the sorrow, the pain, the hurt is being removed, is being destroyed. And as I allow this pure, warm energy of God's light, of God's love into my heart, I feel this very close connection with my creator. And I remind myself that he is always there for me. I don't need to look anywhere else. He is the ocean of love. He is the ocean of peace. And when I connect to that source, I fill myself with abundance of light and love and peace. And I also begin to feel light from inside as all the burdens have left me. My heart is filled with joy. My heart is filled with appreciation that I can love myself. I can love my creator. And I could love humanity as a whole because we are one unit, one family. So let us take a moment to share that love through our heart to all the souls of the world who are going through their own situations. God's light, God's love, reaching into each one's heart and purifying those souls and bringing them closer to the light. Stay in this beautiful awareness, giving love, giving light, giving hope to humanity. Oh.
Shanti. Om Shanti, how beautiful that every time we give our love and our heart to someone, we get closer to the light. I love that. So may we all be closer to that light all week long. And with that, I want to thank everyone for joining us and sharing their spirit and their love. I felt it. I always do through the little squares. I feel it. So thank you again. And next week, we continue with our journey of love. And it's going to be love and compassion. And we're going to be joined by uh, none other than Sister Sandhya. So that should be wonderful, too. So hopefully we'll see you again, Jane. It's great to see you. And uh, everyone, and Ramesh, hello, everyone, and Annie. And I feel like a romper room saying hello to everybody. <laughs> so I wish I could see you all, but uh, you, I'm Michelle. glad to see you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Beautiful. Thank, thank you so much. Good night. Good night. Thank, thank you. Good night. Good night. Yes, Good night. very beautiful. Thank, thank you, Kamala Ben. Thank you, Michelle. Lots of love. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.